they know. I'm Hollywood. Fucking relax, man. Relax. Huh? That's all right. I like it here. Yeah. Cool. Carry on. So, Isra, congratulations on the big win. Now that you've had a few moments to sort of let it all settle in, how does it feel to be uh, the UFC middleweight champion, undisputed? I haven't had a shower yet. I haven't had my infamous uh, thought-provoking shower yet. So, right now, mm, it's normal. It just feels like, man, it feels like I'm still lucid dreaming. So, you might see me do weird things just to see if I'm dreaming. But, yeah. Go, go ahead with the weird things. I was going to say, uh, with the... over that can before, so that was weird. <laughs> yeah. With, with, with the title, belt, you spoke about how the interim belt didn't really mean anything to you, and you kind of, you know, put it away in a box. This one you gave to, you, to your parents, uh, Femi and Taiwo. Well, why did you decide to do that, and what was that moment like? I mean, in Atlanta, because Eugene is the guy that built me up in this game to be the killer that I am, so I presented that to him. They, they, um, they created me, you know, so without them, I wouldn't be possible. So, yeah, this... The, the, the other belt, I put the New Zealand flag on it, so this belt, I'm going to put the Nigerian flag on it. Um, just looking at the fight, how do you sort of reflect that uh, on that one? And also, would you say this was one of the easiest fights when you compare some of the other ones you've had here? Who did I tell? Like, it's probably one of my toughest tests, but I'll make it look easy. Who did I say that to? Yeah, exactly. I told you guys, I'll make it look easy. And, oh, fuck, man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, sometimes like, I have to pinch myself and just be like, hmm. Like that really happened. We just we just did that. Yeah, it's crazy. Like you know, you guys see me. Like you you recognize stars submission radio from from the jump. So you saw me. You knew what I was, what my potential was. And I know you're Aussies. You know I know you guys like Whitaker as well. But I appreciate the love and support throughout the times because you guys still give us a platform. Appreciate it. Would you say this was your star-breaking moment? That people have sort of mm. compared you to Conor McGregor and things like that. With the entrance and obviously in the stadium, uh, no one is doing anything like I'm doing. You know, this is a 60,000-seat arena. People, after seeing that entrance, I bet you the Green Eye Monsters were like, "I fucking hope this guy loses. I fucking hope." I'm sure some of you in here as well. Oh, this asshole! Look at him. Thinks he's a fucking man. I hope he loses. I hope he gets flatlined. You know, because that's just that. It's it's ingrained in us. It's this tall puppy syndrome. It's this jealousy that when you see someone shining you feel like it takes away from your your own shine i'm like look i can't dim my shine just because some people feel uncomfortable everything went full circle tonight i danced with my some of my day ones my guys day not even day negative fives guys that i've known from way back you know jay i used to look up to him you know back in Rora. jesse i taught him how to dance and now he's just taking it and run with it and to have them you know set the tone for me and just have fun and like i said when i'm having fun i'm the best in the world so i was having fun and when I saw him walk out it was too intense and you can't fake that shit you can put your hoodie over your eyes and all you want I can smell the it's pheromones you know to start I can smell it off him I was like he's not he's not with it and he was he was doing the right moves but there was no feeling behind it so I saw everything coming he hit me a few times but like I, I don't like getting hit because not that I'm a bitch or I'm not tough I am but I just it's not smart but um yeah I just showed you guys I can take it and give it as well apparently because I have no knockout power and I got pillow hands Boo -hoo. two more quick ones and then I'll pass the mic on um, mm -hmm. just a couple of little things there was a, a moment I don't think it was broadcast but Robert Whitaker after you dropped him in between rounds or when the next one was starting he winked at you I'm wondering what was going Going through your mind when you saw that, and also uh, you wrote I looked something. at him. I looked at him like um, after the round. The round was about to start. He's looking at the TV. I was like, "Don't look there. Look at me. You got to worry about me right now. That's done." Like that's what I was trying to say to him. Like that's a moment past because I could have like rested my laurels and be like, "Oh yeah, I dropped him. I'm gonna rush him now." No, no, he's a beast. If I try and fight dumb and think like I'm gonna go for the finish now, he could catch me and lay me the fuck out. So I was like, "Nah, don't focus on that. Focus on me. I'm your." problem right now don't be looking at the TV what dropped me like I don't know yeah what did you write in your book when uh, Bruce Buffer was introducing so, you? So, when you talk about Anaheim, <laughs> you know, you ever heard about the anime called Death Note? Anyone? Hands up? Yeah, so, he's the Grim Reaper, right? 
I have a Shinigami with me. And I just had to write his name because I knew. I was like, he's not going to last. I just wrote his name in a death note. And those who know the rules of the death note, they know there's a certain time frame that after your name's written in the death note, the Shinigami will get you. So yeah, it is what it is. And it happened as, it, as it's supposed to be. Just last one. Uh, obviously, you had that moment with Paul Acosta afterwards. Oh, my uh, bitch. You, is, is he definitely the next? Because you've talked I about John Jones. We'll me see. And when, when could we see that fight, potentially? Um, I don't know. I have my people call their people. Uh, right now, I'm Hollywood now, Esther. I'm Hollywood. Uh, right now, I just... Mm, nothing, nothing set in stone. I'm just feeling it. But I, I, I like that fight because the, the the casuals, they're dumb. They see a beefed up beefcake like that and think, oh, that's the guy. I'm still all hype, by the way. I'm still all hype. Don't worry. I'm just the hype train. Um, yeah. So they'll see that and think that's the guy. That's the guy. They just want to see me lose, but they're gonna be waiting for a long time. Israel, I want to ask you about the motivation for that entrance. I mean, as you said, you know, it, it, it's going to bring on haters. There's no question about it. It's also giving you something else to think about and worry about other than, you know, a championship fight. I told you, I'm, I'm a dancer. I'm, I'm, I'm an entertainer. Like, I don't have to worry about it. I, we came up with that on Wednesday. I tried to do it at the Silver Fight in February, and the UFC were like, no, we can't have that. I was like, oh, fuck you then. And then this fight, this is my show. I'm headlining this bitch. So I was like, no, I'm going to do it my way or no way. Like, who else on this kind of stage? is going to do that before they go and whoop some ass, you know? It's, 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 um, no one, I think James Tahuna is the only one that's ever done it from what I can remember with um, the Men in Black intro and Anderson Silva did it in Pride with his Michael Jackson shit. But, like, this is, I showed you guys, if I could sing, trust me, Justin Bieber wouldn't even have a job. But, you know, <laughs> you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> But um, yeah, like you got to realize this is this is the spectacle, man. This is a big stadium. I had to give them a show and set the tone. And uh, there's no one like me, like no one. Yeah. As the fight was unfolding, talk about you know how what you were seeing and what you thought. I mean, he was very aggressive coming after you, but it seemed like you were evading him pretty well. I mean, how was the fight unfolding and what were you thinking? I knew he was gonna start fast, and I knew he falls over himself a lot, you know. And he, what makes him great, like my coach said, what makes him great makes him really vulnerable and susceptible to a lot of things and there was a few shots I almost caught him with um, there was one time he threw the oblique oblique kick for like the maybe the third time and I used my counter that me and Carl Van Roon drilled m like multiple times um, it didn't hurt me by the way it looked like he hit me but what I was doing is just bending my knee not triple C just like bringing it in so I can like you know when someone tries to attack you you take it away so yeah um, it didn't hurt me my knee's fine um, but yeah, uh, I knew he was going to start fast, and I just had to take my time and slow cook him. Yeah. The end of round one, I think it was a little bit confusing for some people because we could, it was so loud, we couldn't really hear a, a bell or a horn or anything. Did you know what was happening then in round one? Did you think the I fight was over? I thought, I thought it was over for a split second, but then I I kind of, I don't know if I heard, I, th I think I heard the clapper, so I was like, okay, maybe it's ended the round. Because when um, the referee jumped in, I thought it was over because I saw his eyes. <laughs> slow like I saw it happen and I was like oh shit but I f uh, next time I'm not gonna do that I held my fist up but that's stupid I should have punched him till the referee actually jumped on him um, but yeah I guess the ref saved him in that one uh, but maybe it was the end of the round I don't know I have to watch the tape again properly assess it um, as for round two, yeah, like I said, he was looking at the screen, and I was like, no, nah, you got to worry about me. Yeah, and as you were celebrating, it looked like you scaled the fence. I know you said your options are open right now, but it looked like you had a message for Paula Costa. Um, what was said there, and, and, and why take that moment to address him, I mean, rather than just enjoy it yourself? And I enjoyed it myself. I definitely enjoyed it, but, you know, uh, it sells the next fight. It sells the next fight a little bit, but at the same time, he's a bitch, and he's my bitch, and I want to make him my bitch, so that's why I did what I did. You talked before this fight about envisioning it, seeing it before it happens, and then when it happens, it's like a memory. Is this what you saw? Deja vu. You can, um, those who were in here setting up la last night or yesterday evening, I came here with my crew and we rehearsed uh, the entrance, and I did it probably about four times or five times, and I did the whole walkout, and I visualized everything, and I did the whole prep point thing, and I stepped in the cage, and I claimed the space, and I did that about four or five times, and I also did the win, the victory. 
like just visualizing it and I imagined the whole place lit up with people and loud cheerings and boos and people by the side what they're saying to you and just practicing it and amazingly when I got to the prep point again before the walkout it just felt even more deja there's levels to this shit man it just felt like man I just did this shit yesterday, which I did. So I was so relaxed. You saw me doing the Carlton when he, when, his, when he was coming out. That was a nice song. I like that track. I was relaxed, and I could just see he was too tense. But some people like to be that way when they fight. That's cool. I just like to flow. I like to have fun with it. Uh, a lot of times when you're talking, when you, you, you seem like you're talking the same language as the fight fans and the fight media, talking about the casuals and Triple C bending the knee and stuff I'm like that. I'm just a fan at the end of the day. I'm just a fan. I've said this. I can rattle off some shit from back in the day, but I'm just a fan. I I just don't play. I've never, ever since they fucked me up on EA Sports and made my body like Chad Mendez. <laughs> I've never touched that game. I've never. They, you need to get me in the studio, do the proper scan, get my proper question mark kicks and everything. So I don't fuck with that game. All I do is play it in real life. Yeah, but I'm just a fan. I'm just a casual fanny troll. But it seems like a lot of fighters, they seem to prefer to stay away. Like they don't want to be reading all the websites or re looking at all the memes on Instagram. And you seem like the exact opposite. I mean, do you think that there's a reason for that? It's only because it's fight week. <laughs> You got a lot of time on fight week, so I'm just, it's fun. And that's what makes my um, thing on Instagram, what do you call it? My engagement on Instagram. Like, I think the average athlete is 2%. Mine's like 8 or 9%. And it's just fun. I got to, excuse me. I got to pass the time somehow. So I just go back, not back and forth in a bad way, but sometimes I just talk to people online and even just casually, I like memes, you know, fuck, they're funny, some of them, some of the meme pages are funny, <clears throat> oh, it always happens, um, yeah, uh, I'm just a fan, man. Well, Leslie, for me, Rob was here earlier and he was saying, you know, hey, I felt like I was doing well right up until I wasn't and that we play a game of, you know, like a tightrope walk here where it could happen to either guy. Did you feel like that, like, the, like there were times where maybe he was close to catching you and, and you caught him instead? He grazed my lip once he whizzed past a few times but I always established my distance so I never felt in danger I never felt in danger and I said leading up to this fight fear fear is not real danger is real and I'm a dangerous man I was the danger yeah uh, yesterday, after the Wayans, we spoke to your family and they spoke about how proud they are of you. And the moment when you got up on the scale, we saw you got almost a little bit emotional when you I saw was. them there. And uh, your mum was talking about how she wanted you to become an accountant, how obviously it's a family of professionals, but how much they've backed you going through this career. What does it mean to now be the champ? I know they're here in the room right now and you sort of handed them that belt in the octagon. Sort of talk us through how that felt for you being able to do that. Uh, it was just cool. Like, I've done it before in Atlanta with Eugene, so to prostrate, um, you know, and hand them the belt, like, just to present it to them. It's just, it's like my two creators. Eugene created this beast, and they created this human. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Just speaking of Eugene, I mean, just quickly, he's a guy that doesn't get as much credit as I believe he deserves. He had a big night tonight and a big weekend altogether. Repeat. I told them, man, we did it in February. Me, Kai, and Shane, we did the three-peat. We repeat the three-peat tonight. Mm. What does he mean to you? Are you trying to make me cry? I don't want you to cry, but okay, I just want to... <laughs> he means a lot to me. I'll take a bullet for that, man. And just finally, I mean, how, how good does it feel to see Dan win against right. Al and, and Brad win? We saw in the back, you were celebrating when Brad won and every, everybody was jumping around from I, the team. Oh, yeah, fucking, oh, yeah, never mind. Okay. <laughs> how, did, how did that feel to um, see that? Yeah, Brad's fight, you know, trust me, he's... This is his first UFC fight. It's not as... You kind of have to adjust some, sometimes. Different folks different strokes but he showed you his mana he showed you like he's from Christchurch in New Zealand and with the earthquake you know see how they rebuild they're strong people Quake City's his name yeah. that man don't fold that man loves a fist fight um, Dan fucking Dan yeah Dan's just a superstar in the making and I'm glad he did what he did tonight on this stage and I didn't hear his post fight speech but I heard 2020 at the end but I heard it's Dustin Poirier so I'm looking forward to that I think that should headline uh, Spock Arena in, in Auckland next year. Izzy, congratulations on the victory. You're in the catbird seat. Paulo Costa came here because he wants to face you next. You said in the octagon you'd face him. You just addressed John Jones. You guys have been beefing on Twitter. Who? 
John, John Jones. No, I don't talk about him anymore. I'm well, over him. The question is, yeah. your decision making for the next fight will next come fight. down to legacy. Nah, look, I, I'm looking at or the, making money. The division. Nah, it's fuck money. Money will come. I don't chase money. Money chase me. It's about legacy. It's about moments. It's about, it's about being an icon. You know, I'll do what I do, and the money will flow. I never ever. I'm doing this game. I never did it for the money. Trust me. We're gonna talk. But I never did it for the money. I'm doing this for legacy. I showed you guys tonight. I can do things that no one else has ever done from the walkout to the fight itself. It was perfect for me and my team. And yeah, I'm not doing this for the money alone. I love the money, don't get me wrong, the money love me. But legacy, history. Uh, thank you. Just a, uh, one quick question. Um, you mentioned in the uh, pre-fight build-up that you were sitting in the nosebleed section watching the Ronda Rousey fight. Here you are now. You've just fought in front of an even larger crowd than that. You're now the unified champion. Did your vision play out exactly as you imagined? Tell us about it. Yeah, exactly as I imagined. Um, there's always variables in the way and whatnot, but in that cage, even backstage, I was so calm. I was like, <laughs> why do I feel this calm? Even Dan was so relaxed. You know, I was like, fuck, should I be this relaxed? But I think we, I just used my, my energy properly. I used my chakra properly, and I was able to just control it and channel it at the right moment, which was in the cage. Izzy, after February, your fight in February down here, mate, I asked you about Africa, and uh, I think you can pretty much call your own shot now. So the question is... Shot caller. The question is, mate, do you pick Africa or do you pick New Zealand? What do you mean? Well, where would you fight next? Where right now? Oh, definitely New Zealand. Oh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. You're trying to be that guy. Um, first of all... Uh, what was I trying to say? For me, the UFC Africa has to take some time. It's not going to be next year. It's going to take some time because even right now, I wouldn't... Honestly, it would have to either be somewhere like Morocco because the, the leadership and the corruption where I'm from, people will try... It will be too... It'd be too much, you know? Like, there's just too many red tapes to get through. You know, when I went back there, I saw there's so much fucked up shit happening up in the in, in, in the politics and whatnot. I don't want to get too much into it, but yeah. Uh, what would I fight next? I don't know. Probably Vegas or New Zealand. I don't know, but I want Dan to headline Auckland, the next Auckland show. And don't do that again, if not. Yeah. Israel, uh, two and a half years ago, you were competing in kickboxing. Uh, you got knocked out by Alex Piera, and now you're the undisputed middleweight champion of the world with an 18-0 perfect record. If, if that fight had gone differently, do you think you would be here? Hmm, yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it definitely showed me, you know, my character, my, um, fucking hold up, my phone's buzzing out of my mind. Go away. It definitely showed me, you know, my grit, my will. Like my after that fight, I realized, look, my dog still loves me, my coaches still love me, my parents still love me. You know, the sun will rise again the next day, and so did I. And here I am. I've risen like a phoenix. Are you the biggest star in the sport right now? What do you think? It's subjective. I can't say that about myself. It's subjective. You might not like me to think I am, but yeah, if you want to say that, go ahead. Thank you. The Ultimate Media Day, you mentioned that... When Listen to this shit, hold up. Let's stop now. Uh, carry on. <laughs> uh, you mentioned that when you won, there, there might be an announcement you'd make in the octagon that would blow people's minds. I just wondered if what that was. What was that? Uh, you mentioned at the Ultimate Media Day that if you won, uh, that there might be an announcement you could make in the octagon afterwards that would blow people's minds. And I was just wondering what that was going to be. I don't remember saying that. I say a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> I say a lot of things. Hey, Israel. Um, obviously, you're not a massive fan of Paulo Costa's physique, it seems. But what he looks good. He looks beefy, isn't he? He looks like a swimsuit model, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. He's a handsome man. Um, but what do you what do you think of his fighting ability? I mean, as a as a it's fighting. Basic, but that's not a bad thing. Basic is what you know. My shit is built on foundation. I just know how to work off my basics. He doesn't. He everyone he fights is a punching bag that's just waiting there to get hit. <laughs> and I can't wait. I can't wait till I fight him. Uh, I'm, I'm not impressed, to be honest. I'm not impressed by your performance. Yeah. 
Realistically, when would you like to have that fight? Uh, I'll talk to my coach and we'll talk. But right now I'm fresh. We can go anytime. Yeah, but not in the near future until I talk to my coaches. It might be a bit hard to say, but would you think he's... Uh, two seconds, hold up two seconds, please. Um, just It's my show, I can do what I want. <laughs> I just have to, my cousin is calling from Nigeria right now. Say hello from me. Olumide Shuga, what's your It's my guy, wait, why will why will <laughs> You're on TV now, Joe. <laughs> you don't know. Shout my multi for me, okay? <laughs> oh, to you. <laughs> He's a little bit tiddly. <laughs> hey, Mark Bay later. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. I love you, I love you, I love you. All right, I'll call you later, okay? All right, peace. Olumide Sugar. It's been blowing me up. Why well, go on? Um, do you think, uh, I mean, I forgot, Polo Costa is a tougher challenge for you than Robert Whitaker, or do you think Fuck Rob no. Okay. I just honestly, like I say, like, I came from when I was, that's why Anderson Silva really changed my mentality about martial arts. Jackie Chan first did, then Anderson Silva, because I had the idea of, I think it's just something that's been infused through Hollywood, that you got to be this jacked Rambo motherfucker to be a fighter and be a tough guy because that's what you see in movies that's what you grow up watching so everyone still sees that and it's just embedded in them that they think that's that's a bad motherfucker or that's the guy it's like nah and look at me oh he's so skinny bro he's so I'm gonna break his face bro I'm gonna break him he got no power bro well I don't need power everyone has power I have precision is he, um, you know, when I was speaking, sorry, over here. Hi. When I was speaking to you in the lead up to this fight, you kind of referenced Demetrius Johnson and Anderson Silva as people that you wanted to be as great as or even surpass. Is, is that your idea now with that title? You you kind of are looking at their run of title defenses and you want to uh, compete with that? Look, we, it's, it's harder to stay champ than it is to be champ. This is pe most people's, like, they've clocked the game. And then you see a lot of people just fall off after this. Then they, they don't have that because they've done it. They've done what they wanted to do, what they set out to do. I've done one thing that I've set out to do, which is become the UFC champion. Now, it's about defending that actively, not like fight twice a year. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people will just expect, it's, it's, it's different. I, I'm, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to run my own legacy. Not like anyone else or compared to anyone else. I'm going to run my own legacy and, and what are you going to carve my own way? Eugene kind of said to us that he, he wanted to see what would happen to you when you became champion. Would you stay as active? Is that what you're saying? You will, you want to keep up this same activity? Uh, yeah, I saw that snippet of the interview when he said that. He's like, it depends. <laughs> uh, there's a quote, uh, you know, it's harder to wake up in the morning when you silk and sleep sheets, uh, silk sheets, sorry. Um, fuck, stay woke, stay broke. What's up here? I don't, don't ask me for shit. I'm broke. I got no money. All my money's is tied up in investments, so I need to eat. I need to pay bills, so I got to fight again. You know, you said you weren't impressed by Paulo Costa. Who are you impressed with that's currently active at the moment? Who Jared Cannonier. I like that guy. He's a he's a cool he's a cool dude. I like his style. I like the fact that he came down from heavyweight to light heavyweight, now middleweight. I'm impressed with what he's doing, and he still has like another one fight probably. Well, it depends. It depends who he beats next. It depends who he fights next. One or two fights. Then I want to see him some. You know, I like I like challenges like that. Like Robert. Robert's a beast. I've seen Robert on tough smashes. I didn't really watch. The, the season, but yeah, I've, was it tough smashes? I don't know which one did he come up on. Yeah, um, but it's about taking names, you know, taking out the greats of this game. So when it's all said and done, it's not about like, oh, he won that belt or this. It's like, nah, he beat the fuck out of everyone that they put in front of him. Just finally, do you expect Rob to be able to fight his way back into a rematch? I situation? told him. I told him in the octagon. I said, I'll see you again, because I remember. I, I, first thing I said, I said, look, you're better than. What did I say? I can't remember now. It'll probably be on one of the things with the UFC. They'll catch it on camera. But I said, 
I'm better or no, I'm greater than I think I am because that was my alarm for the last 12 weeks when I wake up it says UFC 243 be greater than you think you are and that's because he said oh that Israel fella he's not as good as he thinks he is so I took that I was like you don't know how I think I am I'm fucking I'm great like you don't know me so for someone to try and tell me how to beat me I, t I don't know it's not personal but I just kind of use that as like a little fuel so I just told him like I'm greater than I think I am and so are you you know it's like I don't know and I said I'll see him again definitely like he's, he'll definitely work his way up and he said probably in two fights I'll see you again alright thank Ooh. you Izzy. are we done oh that was fun <laughs> smoke or break oh yeah